What's up, everybody? Get your finger out of your nose, Palmetto. I see you. And put some clothes on. So, I've had several of y'all reach out to me because you're exquisitely drain bramaged and the general theme of the inquiries that I'm lumping together to address in this video is uh, what's the balance between OPSEC bro and getting out there and meeting real people to build teams? How, what do you do? All right. I had this question more or less for Pastor Joe on Patreon two years ago. So if you're a Patreon guy, I'm Pastor Joe, go back and look at that. Because I was having some issues with my Mac. And uh, part of what you're going to get from me now is regurgitated Pastor Joe information. But we learn the Hebrew way by doing, go forth and do, swing your axe. Right? If you're new to this channel, these may sound like foreign concepts. I would encourage you, go back channel. Go watch the content back channel. Especially the bird walks and the more philosophical content. Uh, so we can dig a little bit deeper than just the surface. The thin veneer of civility. And get down to the nitty gritty about the reality of being prepared. Which requires a team, says me. So, the first thing is, let's all acknowledge we need a team, right? That's the basis of this question is, how much familiarity is too much familiarity with your team? Concentric circles, man. Not everybody needs to know everything, all right? They're... I have preps and contingencies that Squid doesn't know about. He has preps and contingencies that I don't know about. And either one of us would put our back up against the other one and rain brass until we were dead if we needed to. I trust him implicitly with my life and vice versa. Same for several other members of our mag. The camaraderie and the level of trust is at the max we still have contingency plans that are known only to us so that should be a good indicator for you not everybody needs to know everything especially the brand new people especially the brand new people they don't need to know you know how much food you have put up how much ammo you have put up where it's at what you know they might know where your location is but they don't need to know where your three or four backup locations are, there's lots of details that new people don't need to know. And then as people build trust and build context with you over time, you can bring them a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. And one of the best ways to do that is to give somebody some res responsibility over something and see how they do. Hey T, you know, we should, we should really have a comms class. It's a great idea. You're in charge of it. See, that's how you get things done in a small group. You know what would be great? If we had some hand-to-hand -hand combatives training. I agree completely. Why don't you find somebody to do that instruction for us? So, give them some rope. Let them run with it. It's either going to work out or they're going to hang themselves one or the other. All right, so, and this, of course, gets back to leadership fundamentals. You can't rule as a dictator over your group, right? You have to empower the people underneath you in order to get things done. Of course, assuming that you are the de facto leader of your group or in a leadership position, maybe a captain of tens or hundreds or thousands or whatever, you're not the king, right? You're not the commanding officer, but you get my point here. There's just a huge bolt of lightning over there. That was, uh, that's comforting. Like, well, this area hasn't had enough rain yet. Go watch the uh, Homestead flooding video. So, not everybody needs to know everything. So you can have OPSEC and build a team at the same time. Um, now, the other thing is getting out there into the world and meeting people. Pastor Joe calls it the meat world, M-E-A-T, where people are made of meat. Um, 
meet and greets, prepper extravaganzas, the APN does that. What's the APN? Why the Arkansas Preparedness Network? I've never heard of them. You should. They have a YouTube channel. Oh, what was it? What is it called? The Arkansas Preparedness Network. Go click subscribe and click the little bell. Adam and Bruce and uh, Gordy over there are all great guys. And there's a bunch of other people in the APN who as of yet have not made their presence known on the interwebs, but uh, I'm hoping that they will. So the APM, a APN holds meet and greets regularly. I'm a member of their Facebook page and it's about every other day, hey, meet and greet over here for this, for that, so people can get together and know each other. So you do need to let the guard down enough that you go out into the meat world and get to know somebody. Um, you know, I've had people, and I'm humbled by this, I've had people write me and want to know, can I, can I come to just meet you? Yes. I don't know when. <laughs> I'm trying. And uh, there's one of y'all that just emailed me, and I, I apologize if my email was shortened to the point because... I'm going to be out of town this weekend, and my homestead's underwater, so this weekend's not a good weekend, brother, and I apologize, but you got to get out in the world and meet people, right? So what's the balance there? Meeting people versus OPSEC, real simple, right? When you go, let's think back to high school, right? You're going out on a date with a girl, and just police your mind, just yeah you don't fall in love with that girl on the first date or at least you shouldn't if you do your parents are probably going to be very skeptical because you're reacting emotionally <laughs> or and or physically and not logically right you have to get to know somebody to really fall in love with them says the guy who told his wife nine days after he met her that he loved her. But, uh, I knew. Our souls just clicked. We just clicked right together. Alright, you have to build context and familiarity with people. So, date people. That's why you get together over and over and over and over and over again. Have somebody over to your house and have a barbecue, right? Hang out in the backyard, build a campfire, drink a couple beers and you know, talk about the big stuff and talk about the little stuff. Get a feel for somebody. Because you're building, hopefully, a lifelong relationship with somebody. Now, you don't want to just do that on a whim, but you can begin to build context. I'll give you another example using the APN. Brother Bruce had me, he invited me into his home the first time I ever met him. And you know, I don't know about him, but I knew, I knew just like that, we were gonna be buddies, right? I love you, brother. And Gordy, that's the first time I ever met Gordy. I've since spent Shabbat at his house. Uh, Hobie, first time I ever met Hobie. We've now spent Shabbat together as well. These guys are coming to my home for Sukkot to build context. Brother Roger from Shofar Mountain, that was the first time I ever met him. And by the time it was time to go, we were all embracing one another. Like, you have to build context with people, and you can't do that if you're not willing to go out there and violate your own OPSEC, bro. OPSEC, bro. And uh, go out there into the world and actually get to know somebody. And you know what? If Hey, man, if it's not working out, it's not working out. Hey, dude, you're cool and all, but it, this, this ain't working for me. Maybe next time. Best of luck. So that's one side of the scale. The other side of the scale is OPSEC. Yeah, you have things that are worth protecting. You have things that you've poured a lot of time and a lot of energy into. So the obvious answer here is it's a balance. Well, what's the ideal balance? Uh, if the hair on the back of your neck starts standing up and if your gut starts turning, you're in a bad situation, Maybe you should not be trusting that person. That's one example. If you can't find anybody to meet because you sit at home behind your keyboard all the time, 
Maybe you're skewed a little too far in the OPSEC angle and you need to go meet people. So get out in the world and talk to people, but you don't have to tell them everything up front all the time. Hi, my name's T and I live at such and such address in Arkla, Texas, and we have this much and this much and this much and I have this many pounds of rice and I stock this kind of ammunition and the weapons I have are this, 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 and this, 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 and this. My social security number is this and uh, my truck takes 5W20 and <laughs> don't overshare. <laughs> don't overshare. Just go out into the world and meet people. How can I meet people? Guys, this is the internet. I'm not Google. Google knows these things better than I do. Find groups in your state. If you're in Arkansas, go to the Arkansas Preparedness Network. If you're not in Arkansas, start a Maine Preparedness Network or a North Dakota Preparedness Network or whatever. Go to the DD12 page and there's state chapters on the DD12 um, authors page on Facebook, state chapters. Those people are into prepping. That's all they talk about on that on that page is preparedness. What's DD12? Look it up on Facebook. 30 dozen 12 authors post apocalyptic fiction writers group or something like that. They're preppers and they have state chapters in I think every state by this point, if not most of them. So you can find like-minded people there as well. There are options, right? Hell, go on to FarmersOnly.com, find you a wife. She's probably into preparedness if she's into farmers. I don't know, but go look. The point is go look, make the effort. Good things happen when you meet opportunity with effort. So just go forth and do and swing your ax. Yes, you have to have OPSEC. Yes, you have to have people. You can't have all one or all of the other. You have to balance the two of them together. How you do that is best for you to decide in your circumstances, with your people, with your conditions. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that if you sit on your butt all day and don't go looking for a team, you'll never have one. And I can also tell you if you tell everybody in your team all of your dirty little secrets, you may not have a team for very long either at least a team you can trust. So, the sky is about to open up. I'm gonna get off of here and focus on driving. Shalom and blessings, brethren. Love you guys, I'll talk to you later. Adios.